Hello and welcome to News Click. On March 26th, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman announced a 1.7 lakh crore rupee financial package to deal with the COVID-19 crisis. But the question that has been on everyone's minds is that is this enough? To talk more about this, we have with us Tejal Karitkar who's done some modeling on this issue. Tejal is with the Energy Environment Program of the National Institute of Advanced Studies in Bangalore. Tejal, thank you for joining us. So Tejal, to get straight to the point, uh, are these numbers, is, as a 1.7 lakh crore, is that number enough considering what the estimates you've done looking at the situation of the economy? No, I think uh, as per anybody's estimates, now it is pretty clear that the 1.7 lakh crores is uh, very, very less. And uh, I think a lot of people have also pointed out that that 1.7 uh, seven lakh crores entirely is not new. Uh, only a part of that is actually new expenditure that has been uh, that has been promised. But uh, even if we consider that entire amount as being uh, new relief, uh, it's going to be grossly inadequate. Uh, it's not just my estimates, but also the estimates of the IMF or, uh, you know, KPMG has a new report recently uh, or uh, anybody. I mean, the economists all over the world have been talking about uh, how this is this is going to be uh, a big problem. If you look at, uh, for example, what other countries have promised, I mean, it's anywhere uh, ranging from 10%, 15% of their GDP. Is That's the kind of uh, fiscal package people are talking about. Uh, whereas India is uh, really, I mean, our, whatever we've promised so far is uh, very, very inadequate in comparison to what even some of the other countries which have lower GDPs than us have promised. Right. So, in terms of the impact of the economy, based on the models you did, what is a more likely number in terms of uh, the kind of losses that we're going to suffer? Uh, now, this all depends on the extent of uh, the lockdown. Uh, say, for example, uh, I, let me talk about some of the other estimates first. Uh, there have been numbers such as 20% of GDP uh, loss, etc., that have been put forward. Uh, uh, in uh, the model that I have done is a simple uh, input output model which, uh, which simply basically looks at uh, pro rata loss of uh, uh, output based on the number of working days lost and there are some assumptions that are involved here uh, assuming for example that the output in any sector is more or less uniform across the year which it isn't especially for example in agriculture or uh, even some other manufacturing sectors. Uh, but nevertheless, if you assume that there's a uniform output across the year, then each day you can arrive at some estimate of the output. And you can say, okay, if you have a 20-day lockdown or a, a 30 days of work days lost or 40 work days lost, what can be the loss in output? Now, uh, given that we actually have an official 21-day shutdown, and this is not uh, uniform across sectors. Some sectors are going to be shut down for longer. For example, schools and colleges have been shut down for much longer, whereas uh, the electricity sector or the uh, water supply am amenities uh, sectors are not shut down. The health sector is not shut down. Uh, so across sectors, you have uh, different varying days of uh, work days lost. But if you take a sense of, uh, you know, what is likely to be an average, you take some uh, varying estimates for an average shutdown of even 27 days. Uh, which is at current uh, estimates is less because like I said, some sectors are going to be shut down for much longer. Uh, even at 27 days, however, we are looking at a, a loss of GDP of about 30 lakh crores. That's about 13% of the GDP. And this is based on some linear assumptions. Uh, so, you know, the number should not be taken as sacrosanct. Uh, there are non-linearities in the system. Uh, there are also issues with data. Uh, this is a severe underestimate also because uh, a large part of the informal segment of the economy we do not have data for and a lot of macroeconomic estimates really uh, tend to uh, underestimate these impacts because that there's no data for the informal economy and the loss that they are going to suffer. So uh, this is whatever said and done a conservative estimate, a 13% loss to GDP for a 27-day lockdown. If we take a slightly higher estimate, uh, because even though sectors, let's say sectors do get, I mean, work days lost are about 20 to 30 days, but to eventually then kickstart work and production and consumption in the, sec in, in the economy, it's going to take a longer time. So if we assume a 47-day uh, period of work days lost, 
Then we are looking at uh, you know a loss of about 50 lakh crores. Uh, that's 23 percent of GDP. Now these are both you know figures that are broadly maybe uh, provide us with some ballpark values uh, that are the, uh, of estimates. I am not saying that these are accurate, but nevertheless uh, they provide us some insight into what is the likely impact that we are going to see. And uh, so 1.7 lakh crores seems uh, really, really measly in, uh, in, in comparison to this. Right. So the question that is often uh, posed by uh, the argument that is often posed by critics is that, say, spending too much, spending too much leads to deficits and those kind of issues. So do you think this, this is a time to even think about these kind of issues or do we need a mass infusion, so to speak, considering these are numbers? Yeah, you know, um, uh, you sh you're, you're probably be, you'll get, you'll ask, you ask 10 different economists, you'll get 10 different answers on that. And I'm not an economist, so maybe my answer would uh, be different from all of this. But uh, look at what is happening around the world. Nobody is worried about uh, deficits anymore. And uh, if we look at uh, what has happened historically also, even the most ardent supporters of fiscal austerity uh, actually give it up. Uh, when uh, it suits them. So it's uh, sort of almost like, a, a, you know, a dogma that is imposed on society and then uh, everybody else seems to be, uh, to, to be to be sticking to it rigidly, whereas those who uh, pushed it down our throats are giving it up happily. So uh, there is no reason to be worried about this. One of the things I think we should also be uh, thinking about, and th I think this is the way in which to think about it is that the lockdown now, lockdown period now, is going to have a much longer effect. It's going to have not just an immediate effect in terms of impact on GDP, but a staggered effect across uh, the year. If uh, a recovery is possible, it is likely to be only in the next year. Uh, even that may not be complete. So any kind of uh, uh, deficit uh, spending now should be uh, should be considered as an ins uh, as an insurance against future loss of GDP. So I'm not saying that, you know, we will be able to monetize 50 lakh crores or, uh, you know, be able to offer that kind. But uh, we definitely need to do much more than 1.7 lakh crores. And where do we get that money from? What what happens to our fiscal deficit, etc., is not something that uh, we should worry too much about now. Nobody seems to be worrying about it. I don't know why we are worrying about it. Uh, and we should consider it as insurance against uh, what is likely to happen to the kind of losses that we are likely to see to GDP in the future. And I would think that a lot of uh, the targeted sp the spending should also be targeted, especially at sectors which are going to be affected the most, because right now it's more in terms of a uh, model of direct cash transfers and uh, say specific specifically targeted at certain sections, which is good. But I would think that many sectors of the economy right now still don't have an answer regarding the government's attitude. No, absolutely. And this is, uh, in, in that sense, it's a unique crisis. Uh, and this has been said by others also before that it is going to be a crisis of both supply and demand. It's not going to be simply uh, a crisis of, uh, we are not going to have only supply constraints. We are not going to have a drop in aggregate demand. We are going to have both uh, in the economy. So there is going to be loss to wages and there is going to be loss to businesses. And that, therefore, the cyclical impacts of this uh, that will prolong over a period of time, the danger of that is actually pretty high. And so your uh, normal methods of thinking about how you, uh, you know, emerge from a crisis are not going to work. We are going to have to think about this, uh, of course, you know, more directed uh, uh, support to the most vulnerable sections of, of, uh, the, uh, of the economy. Uh, agriculture, for uh, example, uh, is uh, are going to be very important. Also, the small and medium uh, uh, scale industries, because so, for example, uh, some of the results from the model that uh, I did uh, show that the plastic industry is going to suffer about 36 percent drop in uh, output. But the plastic industry itself is not homogenous. If you look at the uh, virgin plastic producers, about uh, you know 40 to 45 percent of uh, the companies that produce virgin plastic actually employ less than 20 people. Around 20 percent of those companies employ more than 200 people. So, so the scale at which plastic production happens is very varied. 
in fact recycled uh, plastic is even more so 70% of uh, the recycled plastic units actually employ less than 20 pe uh, people so there's a huge segment here so that 36% loss that's going to be seen in the plastic uh, segment and it, and it might not be 36% like i said i'm hedging in terms of the numbers uh, you know it can be 30 it can be 45% it can be 30% but it's going to be huge i mean that much is pretty clear but who's going to bear it those who have uh, the, those who are going to be the most vulnerable are going to shut down because both their or their entire supply chain is going to be affected. There's going to be no solvency uh, for their suppliers. There's going to be uh, no consume no money uh, with their consumers to buy their products. So they are going to have to shut down. So protecting this uh, segment of uh, production is also going to be important. It's not simply going to be enough in terms of transferring money because you might then. Uh, be able to in, uh, infuse some amount of demand in the economy, but there's going to be a supply shortage. So uh, this is unique in some sense. And we've seen some some of this analysis, for example, is done uh, for uh, events like, like this, which are external shocks to the economy. Like, uh, for example, if you have an earthquake in a region or a cyclone or floods where all of this gets gets disrupted. It's not only a demand, it's the supply also that gets disrupted. But it's usually very localized and a very short, uh, short duration shock. What we are now seeing is uh, going to impact the economy worldwide. Uh, and it's going to be a long drawn out shock. Even, I mean, even in terms of what how we define a shock, it's going to be very different. So all our imports, uh, exp you know, exports, everything is going to be affected. So uh, we have to think about this very, very differently than simply saying that, you know, okay, we'll give some money right now, we'll give some money later. It's not going to work. Uh, this requires uh, a lot more. Thank you so much, Tejal, for talking to us. Thank you for having me.